The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD available from SDC Publications. In this video I'm going to show you how you can do the tool holder in isometric. So we're in chapter 7 of your book and I've opened up the drawing already so we're starting off with the tool holder drawing that you've done already. Chapter 4 you did the multi-view projections and in chapter 5 you went and put the dimensions in it so this is where we are right now. Our isometric when we're done it's going to go right around here so when we look over here on our layout it's going to show up in this area right here. But for now we're going to come back over here to we're on the model tab and I'm actually going to even though it's going to start off over here I like to bring it way over to the side just so I have a nice big clear area to get the drawing started and then I'll move it into place when I'm done. Now a couple of things that I do differently than the book is I actually create a couple of new layers so um, I'm going to show you the layers that I create. I'm going to click on new over here and I'm going to call this one construction and the construction layer for whatever reason I like to make it yellow and I'm going to go ahead and load in a line weight or I'm sorry that's the line weight a line type I'm going to click on load and I like to do the dot you guys can choose whatever you'd like. Um, you don't have to do dot. The book actually looks like it's using one called phantom. So you could use a phantom layer if you or line type if you'd like. So I'm going to say OK here. Um, and then I'm going to create another new layer. And this one I'm going to call it isometric. This is what my actual isometric is going to be on. So I'll make that red. And I'll make it a continuous line type and I also want the line weight to be default. Unlike your visible which has the thicker line weight, your isometric is not going to be as thick as your visible lines. So isometric, red, continuous, default. Um, but in going forward I'm going to go ahead and set my construction layer current so I'm just double clicking it. You can see it's current. It has a little check mark next to it. Close that out. Construction layer is current. What I need to do in step one, it tells me to go ahead and create a bounding box. That bounding box is nice to draw whenever you, especially when you first start off with isometrics, because it kind of gives you a sense of your, of your boundaries. It gives you a sense of how big or small this is going to be. So you know you're not going to make it bigger than it should be or smaller than it should be. It's a nice, it's overall shape of the, um, of the object that you're going to be drawing. So I'm going to start my line command. Actually, one thing I forgot to do is I got to get myself into isometric mode. So um, in the T connector video, I showed you a couple of ways that you can do it. But um, since I've already shown you, I'm just going to come right over here and we will just do the uh, let's start off with ISO right. Doesn't really matter which one you start off with. You can hit F5 to change. So I'm going to start off with the line command and notice right now I can draw a line any which way that I want. I want to make sure that my ortho is turned on when I'm using isometric. It is super, super important to turn on that ISO or that ortho when you're in ISO mode. So ortho is this button down here. You can also hit F8. F8 will get you into ortho as well. All right, so I'm just going to start drawing my box. So I'm going to go 2.5. I'm going to go up 2.75, back over 2.5, back down 2.75. I'm going to go, now I'm going to hit F5 to change my crosshair. So I'm in ISO left right now. I'm going to make this a distance of 7. And I'm going to come up a distance of that 2.75 and I'm going to come back over a distance of 7. just need to fill in the rest of those lines and you can draw those lines in if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just copy. Once you've got them drawn you can just copy them from here to here. Copy this guy from here to here and that's good. I've got my bounding box. So this is just a nice kind of guideline just to show you overall where to get started, where to where to draw this thing. Now that I've got my bounding box drawn I'm going to set my isometric layer current and I'm just going to get started drawing this thing. So we're going to go by the dimensions that we're given. I'm going to draw the top plane first. So I'm going to come over here and just draw on top of these lines. I'm just going to draw a box. 
that is, let's turn on my this guy right here, F5 to go back. Now this is a 3.5, F5 again. I'm going to come right over and this is a distance of 2.5. Come back over here, 3.5. So I've got that top surface right now. A couple of things that I need to do with that top surface is I need to um, get that little slot cut out and I also need to do the fillets on the side. So let's let's start with the fillets. So I'm going to, with the fillet command, I, or well, with the fillets, I cannot use the fillet command since I'm in isometric, which is a total bummer because that's such a great command. But what I'm going to have to do instead is just copy these things over. Again, I can't offset, so I'm going to have to copy. So sad that those commands don't work in ISO. So I'm going to copy this over. My radius on um, these fillets is 0.5, so I'm just going to do the copy command and I'm going to make my copies in 0.5. So 0.5 over here, 0.5 over here, and notice I'm just picking up wherever, but I'm exaggerating how far I take this out. So I'm taking it way further than I need to so that I can just type in my distance of 0.5 on that copy. If I get too close, what I don't want to have happen is an O snap. I don't want an O snap to just jump in and try to override and mess up my copy. So I'm kind of exaggerating how far I take it, 0.5. One more, 0.5 in, we're going to take this guy. 0.5. Now I've got the centers of where those ISO circles are supposed to go. So I'm going back to my ellipse command. I'm choosing the axis end option. I'm going to type I for ISO circle and this marks the center of that ISO circle. I can either type 0.5 or I can snap to the endpoint of that line. If you know that you did your copies correctly, that would work. Now that I've gotten one drawn, I can just copy it. You feel free to draw another ISO circle if you don't want to copy. And now I just need to get rid of those construction lines and I'm going to start my trim command. So trim, press enter, and then I just click here, 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 just rounded out those corners so that looks good. Now it's time to get that little slot cut out. So that slot, um, the way that I always do this is I'll just draw a line straight up from the middle and that slot goes back a distance of 1.5 that feels wrong so I'm going to just draw a line right here coming from the midpoint and my distance of that line is 1.5 now that I've got that distance, I'm going to use my copy command again. This overall slot has a distance of 1, so I'll just come 0.5 this direction, take it the other way. Notice I'm exaggerating it. 0.5 this way, draw a line to connect. I'm going to erase out this guy and then just trim out the middle. Looking good. Now that I've got that drawn, I'm going to just copy the whole thing down a distance of one. So I'm going to use my copy command, select this whole area, bring it down. I need to change my crosshair, so I'll go down. So I'm using ISO right right now, a distance of one, and that looks good. And I actually didn't have to do like copy everything. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't need here, so I actually don't need this line. I don't need this line. It's kind of cluttering it up, isn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. I'm going to take it from the quadrant down, quadrant down, or endpoint, sorry, endpoint to endpoint. Trim out what I don't need. And I need one more line back here, but with that line, I'm going to do, oops do the copy command here. Just I'm going to grab this guy so that it just he goes straight back. Alright, so this looks good. I'm almost done with this top little part. Now one thing that um, I need to do, this line right here is shorter than the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my copy command. Select this construction line and I'm going to F5. I'm going to copy this back that distance. So 2.75 and now I can trim this to that 2.75.
notice that as I do this, I like to trim and kind of delete lines, uh, construction lines as I go. For me, it just makes it more clear. I like to, I like to uh, kind of declutter my drawing and keep it as simple looking as possible. All right, so this is uh, pretty good looking. It's a nice, a nice beginning for the top right here. Um, now what we need to do is just figure out the rest of this. So I've done my 2.75 offset to get the length of this line. Now what I'm going to do is figure out kind of getting started on the bottom half of this. So doing that same copy of that same construction line, this time I'm going to come over a distance of 3.25. And what this does for me is it tells me where the bottom of that line is. So if I come from here to there, I've got it. Delete that line out, and now I'm going to do a copy. Bring this line over a distance of 4. Alright, now that I've got that a distance of 4, I'm going to um, copy this line. I need one more line over here. Trim this guy out. And I'm going to draw a line just going straight from here to here. And then I know that it's going to go up a distance. I can even exaggerate it if I need to. I'm just going to type in the distance of 1. That's how thick this, this bottom half is down here. But from that point, I can just snap to the end point here. So now I've kind of taken care of that little zigzag in the middle of the tool holder. Now that I've gotten that taken care of, I've really done the entire, you know, the, the, the front half of this thing. All I need to do now is um, just, just do the back part, which is mostly, it's a bunch of um, ISO circles. So what I'm going to do to get started back there is I'm actually going to copy this guy just so that we have a length. Actually, let me copy a construction line just to make it easier. We can tell what we're looking at here. I'm going to copy a construction line right here. The reason I made it a construction line is because I don't really see it. We're not going to have that ultimately, but I know that that's the size of this thing. So that is a 2.5. So um, on the top plane of that surface there, that is a 2.5. I'm going to go ahead and do another construction line. I'll set that layer current. I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint there, and I'm going to bring it out a distance of 2.25. That 2.25 is to the center of all of those, remember those circles and the um, arcs that we have right there? So these are just construction lines. I don't need this construction line anymore. I'm going to go ahead and leave this. I'm going to use this construction line a little bit later. Put my isometric layer current again. And now what I'm going to do is draw some iso circles. So, I'll do my axis end, I for ISO circle, starting right here. That ISO circle does not look right, so I'm going to just keep pressing F5 until I get that ISO top is what I'm looking for. So ISO top, and this thing has a radius of 0.75, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw my line. I'm going to start one from this back corner here, and let me turn off my ortho, and I'm going to do shift right click. These give me my temporary O snaps, and I'm going to find tangent. So shift right click, tangent. See if I can get a tangent here. Shift right click, tangent. Ooh, it's happened that, that's happened to me before where I couldn't get that tangent. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is the mirror command. So mirror, and I'm just going to mirror straight along here. Oops. move that line into place. Now this is a little bit of tricky stuff here. That line did not come out right, but when I pick them up now and try to snap to tangent, I'll get my tangent O-snap. I have no idea why that O-snap did not work in the first place. So I've got my tangent O-snap. Um, 
and I'm actually not going to see the back end of this. So at this point, honestly, I can just delete those construction lines and go ahead and trim. You know, I like to trim as I go. And uh, I can even trim this. And I'm going to copy this down a distance of one. I'll draw my construction line from quadrant to quadrant. Or not construction, that's a visible line. And then I'm going to trim this and trim that. So I've got my the bottom looking pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to do another ISO circle. So ISO circle, I'm going to start it at the same center point as the other. They're all concentric. Oops, I forgot to type I for ISO circle. F5, F5 to get the ISO top here. And this one has a diameter, 1.25. That 1.25, if you remember, we're going to copy it up. F8 to turn my ortho on. It goes up 0.25. So I'm going to draw a line from here to here, here to here, trim out what I don't need, eee. come on little guy, there you go, and I actually don't see any of this either, so that's looking good, this tangent just doesn't look right does it, um, one more iso circle, and that's going to be at the top right here. And this one has a diameter 0.75. All right. So, I've just drawn this in isometric. What I can do now is just turn off my construction layer. Use my move command and just move this right into place. Click over here and it looks great. It's in my layout. At this point you can print out your project and you have just finished your chapter 7 isometrics.